And now it's time for Silly Songs with Stephen, the part of the show where Stephen comes out and sings a silly song. No, that's not what's happening in this battle video. But today we do have a Wi-Fi video. Uh, good battle. It's actually against a passerby named Connor. I have a lot of videos on my channel against one of my rivals named Connor. There's just a passerby. Uh, it's still a great battle though. I'm actually using in this battle that core that I had in that Pokemon Showdown battle video previously with the Deoxys Defense running Taunt, Wish Passing Sylveon, and Physically Defensive Venusaur. I have Choice Scarf, uh, Rotom Heat, and Banded Mian Shao, just to have some little wall breaking power in there. Um, Connor actually is in the, gonna end up starting off with his Italian Stallion, which is a great nickname for his Zepstrika. And since he Volt Switches immediately, I was thinking maybe he's Scarfed or Specs? Because if he had just, he could have just stayed in and hit me really hard, I think. But that gives me an opportunity here to set up a little bit. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get up too much because Farfetch'd is a threat. That stick that it has, that critical hit Night Slash, two hit KOs my Deoxys Defense. Even after Leftovers. We cannot stay in on that. That is just not really um, worth trying to play around with. So I'm going to bring in Taido here again. This is my banded me and Xiao. Uh, a few issues that I ran into on Showdown are just, I just didn't have enough wall breaking power if something got set up. I just couldn't hit some things hard enough. So, Banded High Jump Kick really does the job as far as just being able to break through, them, break through things. Now, unfortunately, since I am locked in the High Jump Kick, I'm not going to be able to do very much damage to Slowbro, and my opponent knows that. Um, he probably didn't know if I was locked in or not, but the worst thing I could probably do to him at that point is U-Turn. Just gonna go out in the Sylveon here, who is max HP, max defense. Um, I'm sorry, max special defense. So even if it wants to set up, I figured I could take a good amount of hits. Uh, it, fortunately, it does start setting up Call Mines. I was really hoping for the special attack drop from the Moonblast attack. I'm unable to get it, but I am able to put Slowbro at low enough HP where I was hoping to force it to slack off or at the very least, um, to, I don't know, I didn't want it attacking, basically, on this turn, is what I was trying to do. So he actually ends up going for a third Calm Mine, which is getting a little bit scary if he was able to live this attack from my Mammal Swine and slack off. That would be a little bit annoying. I could just bring him in shot afterwards and hit him with uh, the Choice Bandit U-Turn. Fortunately, I do force him into attacking right there, which is great. He does not recover up his HP. And so that means I can revenge kill him with Mian Shao and go back out into something instead of be being locked into to U turn here. Um, I think the choice ban was actually needed for the KO there, assuming he's running max HP, max defense. So that is very useful to have. Now I decided to go back on into Deoxys defense just because he's. I have a lot of speed on this build. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't paying attention. I meant to give him Rocky Helmet, I gave him leftovers. Uh, Rocky Helmet would have helped out a lot during this battle. I know Mux like to set up, whether it be Curse or Power Up Punch. Um, if this were a Power Up Punch variant, I didn't really care. If it were the Curse variant, that could get really annoying, so I decided to taunt him there just to stop him from doing any of those shenanigans. Uh, taunt only lasting three turns really kind of sucks this generation, but I can definitely see why they nerfed it. So I am able to taunt Muck. I'm going to put up some more entry hazards just because all of his Pokemon are grounded except for the Farfetch and I don't have to worry about Farfetch anymore. Uh, so I know he's probably just going to use Poison Jab some more, but I don't want to take the risk of him, of course, uh, setting up in my face. So we're going to taunt him again as I switch out into Venusaur here. Venusaur is max HP, max defense, with uh, the little bit remaining there going into special defense. And I'm just going to be able to Mega Evolve. And since he is still taunted, I don't have to worry about him cursing. And I can hit him with a pretty powerful Earthquake, even uninvested. I almost do half, which is just really nice, because Muck is definitely no slouch on the bulk side there. Um, I do like that nickname, though, Watcher Step, although 
Since muck is based more off of water pollution, I guess you'd be like walking in the, the, the kind of the shoreline there. But that's okay. I'm able to take out muck. He decides to just go straight for the damage on my Venusaur instead of trying to set up at the last minute there. Darmanitan comes out. I was thinking it was Scarf just because that's the most common item for these guys. But he actually has Fire Punch instead of having Flare Blitz. So since he has Fire Punch, definitely thinking that he's just the Life Orb Sheer Force set. I did need to confirm it though. Um, my Deoxys does not have enough speed to outspeed a Darmanitan. I think it only, can only be outspeed base 90s. Um, and so here I sw double switched out from my Mr. Mazer into Sylveon because I knew Sylveon could take a neutral Rock Slide. Uh, if he, of course, was locked in, he probably would have switched out. So, now that I know that that is the case, I know that my Scarfed Rotom is definitely faster than he is. Unfortunately, since um, I didn't put the Rocky Helmet on my Deoxys Defense, he's going to be able to barely live that because Darmanitan actually has a pretty nice HP stat. Uh, but since I know that my Rotom is faster, I definitely know that my Mian Shao is faster. And so it is time for high jump kick into the ground. Aw, oh, that sucks. I really, I, I miss those attacks way more than I really need to. Um, fortunately, we hit the second one. Getting up those spikes was very crucial as it was able to break the possible sturdy on the Probo Pass. Me actually missing that high jump kick is going to come back to bite me um, later on, so stay tuned for that. Now, I switch into Sylveon here because I know I can take any hit. Unfortunately, he gets a crit, and that sucks because without the crit, I would have been able to live another Thunderbolt and then wish up and then protect to get half of my HP back. Unfortunately, since I had that happen, now I have to come in here with Venusaur. I know he's going to switch into Darmanitan, and I was hoping that the Entry Hazards would kill it, so I just went for Synthesis. Unfortunately, he barely lives the Entry Hazard, so once again, really needed that Rocky Helmet on my Deoxys Defense. Uh, Fire Punch actually doesn't do as much as I expected it to do, being Life Orb, Sheer Force, um, and Stab. Uh, not so much super effective because Thick Fat. But that's okay. I, I figured I could live and overheat from the Zeb Strika and hit it with an Earthquake. Really good that Venusaur didn't get burned at any point during this battle, and the Zeb Strika barely lives! Uh, so that means I have to switch out. And he actually misses that overheat, which isn't going to matter. But if my Mian Shao had full HP, or close to full HP from earlier, and had not missed that high jump kick, then I could have let Venusaur be KO'd and then just finish off um, the uh, Zeb Strika easily. But now we're down to the crucial moment. A minus four overheat hitting my Venusaur with thick fat. Will he live the hit? The, the answer is yes. Yes, he will live it because it's a Venusaur. Are you guys really surprised? Really, it's a Venusaur. It's the best Pokemon, obviously. Okay, maybe not obviously. Did you guys see that death paddle that um, uh, Screw Attack posted with the three starter Pokemon? If you haven't seen that, go check that out. I call BS. I don't care how much logic they have. My fanaticism knows no bounds. Actually, I really like the way that they did it. Very uh, thorough analysis, I would say. But, all that aside, I hope you all enjoyed today's battle. Um, I am headed to MTAC this weekend in Murfreesboro, the Middle Tennessee Anime Convention. Um, so if you all happen to be going to that, come and find me. I'll be derping around playing Pokemon, most likely. I may even be playing Animal Crossing. Who knows? I might actually take the cartridge out of my DS. But if you all are there, come and say hello. Otherwise, uh, I will do my darndest to have a video be uploaded for you while I'm gone on Friday. Uh, but be sure to enter the April Friendly. The registration opens on Friday, April 17th. Or, I think that's Friday. That may be Thursday. Either way, uh, be sure to register um, because the registration period will remain open as long as there are slots. So, as soon as it opens, go and sign up. All the slots are filled, no more people can get in. It doesn't matter if you try to bribe the bouncer. You're not getting in with those shoes. So, all that is happening. You guys have a great day, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye now.